Hello and welcome to another edition of Paul.com TV. My name is John Strand. In this particular edition, we're going to be playing with AV Bypass yet again. Why are we going to be playing around with AV Bypass yet again? Well, it turns out that a lot of people's payloads that they're creating an MSF payload with MSF and code through the Metasploit project are starting to get caught. So they're starting to ask questions on our mailing list on a very regular basis, basically saying, what do we got to do to stop this from happening? Well, I think trying to understand exactly what Metasploit is doing might help out quite a bit. So let's jump into it. First, let's jump in and let's take a look at a command that will actually generate a payload for us. Let me zoom in here for you guys. So the first thing I want you to notice is that we're actually running we're actually running trunk. You guys can't see that here, but we're running the most up-to-date version of Metasploit. And you can see we're running MSF payload, and we're doing a very simple Windows Shell reverse TCP payload. Localhost that the payload's going to connect back to is 172.16.30.0. A nice non-routable IP address that will only work on my VMware subnet. Local port that it's going to connect back to is 4444. Of course, the output's going to be raw because that's what MSF, MSF encode is going to expect. Now we're going to encode it five times. We're going to use an encoder of Shikata Ganai, which yet again means there's nothing to be done about it. Very similar to some of the previous videos that we've done. Where things get different, however, is this little X. With X, we can specify an alternate template template file that is going to take our payload and actually inject it into. In this situation, I've copied it into applications, trunk, data, templates, pslist.exe from the sysinternals toolkit off of Windows, Microsoft Windows uh, website. So we've actually gone to Microsoft, downloaded the sysinternals toolkit, and I'm using pslist. Why? Because I seem to have the best luck with those executables for some crazy reason. The output type is going to be exe, and we're going to call it pslist2.exe. I hit enter. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. It goes through, and it's going to encode multiple times, and it's going to give us the output. I'm getting an error about Ruby information or Ruby, Ruby versions. Lucky for us, it works just fine. So here we go. You can see that Shikata Ganai has succeeded. We've encoded it five times. Life is good. Wait a minute. Why did I specify a different template? I'm sure that there's people wondering that little dilemma. Well, earlier today I went through and I uploaded template.exe from the Metasploit framework into VirusTotal. It was actually earlier in the week. Template.exe by itself with no payload in it, no exploits, nothing was caught by 12 out of 41 antivirus vendors. See, there were a lot of people that were thinking, hey, the antivirus vendors are finally getting smart, they're getting, catching the Metasploit payloads, life is just absolutely hunky-dory. Unfortunately for everybody involved, instead of actually going through and trying to find novel ways to detect the payloads, they were actually going through and detecting the template rather than the payloads that were being put into the template. So that's somewhat of a problem for the security industry as a whole. So now, if we go through when we try to set up and run this particular payload, the main question is, will it work? Well, I've gone through and I've established the multi-handler here. Let me show you my options here. Show options. And you can see we've got the L host is 172.16.30. Let me zoom in for you guys. Dot one, the L port is 4444. And we're just going to sit and listen for connections. Type exploit, hit enter. Away it goes. We've got our payload handler alive and listening. Now, I've done a little, uh, what is it, the cooking show type thing, and I've already moved my executable over to my Windows box. I'd like to introduce you to my wonderful Windows 7 box, which I absolutely love and adore. I go ahead and I run pslist2.exe. It executes, and we come back, and sure enough, we do have a shell on our Windows 7 box, as you can see, version 6.1. I'm going to do DIR, and you can see that I'm actually in the same directory where, it, uh, where, it, where it's running IP config. Everything works just fine. We just compromised the computer system. Now, um, I've got to give a shout out and give credit where credit is due. Oh, wait, I want to show you the AVE total. Okay, so our executable using a different template was only caught out of two of 40 antivirus engines. Uh, this is the one we just we just took care of. PSLS reverse 44, I left out a 4.exe. Um, if you upload the executable, if you do exactly what I did, odds are you're now going to be caught by AVG. It actually turned around and started catching it very shortly after. But what's interesting about antivirus vendors detecting this piece of malware, specifically with Symantec, is that they're calling it suspicious.insight. Well, 
what does that mean to you and me? Can you go and look up a signature and get some information on suspicious.insight? Turns out you can't. On most installations of Symantec, if it comes back and it says suspicious.insight on virus total, it'll still work just fine on many of the computers that are running McAfee's antivirus. The other person that detected it, actually, believe it or not, was Microsoft's antivirus. What is it? Their total security suite. And I thought that was novel, but hey, no one's running that. Also, it seemed to work just fine on my system whenever I was running it with antivirus, the Microsoft antivirus running. So I've got to give credit where credit is due, as I was saying. Um, I did some searching around the internet to see if anybody else had talked about this. And if anybody has, I apologize profusely. Um, I was only able to find one little post on this by Mubix, of course, Hail Mubix, uh, room362.com. He had a quick little write-up about it, and he was actually in inserting his uh, payload into TCP view. Um, an excellent little write-up, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about the antivirus bypass capabilities uh, by using alternate templates and alternate executables. My name is John Strand, once again, from Paul.com Security Weekly. Um, we have our podcast every single Thursday from about 7.30 to whenever we run out of beer Thursday night. So check us out at paul.com.com. Thank you very much, and have a great day.